Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. And today, uh, we're, we're going to look at uh, the uh, map and kind of the ongoing uh, territorial uh, changes that may have taken place. Not a great deal have happened. But we want to look at we want to ask the question, how does the Russian military win this war? And I think first and foremost, uh, the Russian political apparatus is going to have to acknowledge that it is in a war. That is probably one of the main challenges right now the uh, Russian military, the Russian state is facing in the fact that uh, it is trying to portray a picture that it is not fighting a war. It is conducting this quote-unquote special military operation. Now, on the flip side of this coin, you have the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians believe they are at war. They are also conducting themselves as a uh, as a state as a nation state like a nation who is at war not conducting a quote unquote special military operation so that's going to be the first component to this that uh, Russia is is going to have to come to grips with that it is in a war not only a war against Ukrainians but one could argue that it is also in a war against the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and uh, by proxy to some extent the United States. That's probably not what uh, anyone wants to hear but that's kind of the situation that uh, currently exists. Uh, in any other circumstances uh, if uh, uh, we were seeing what we are seeing right now in terms of how much support the United States is providing to the Ukrainians, then it, it would seem that the Russians would have to acknowledge that uh, the United States and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is uh, uh, currently uh, also operating in a manner that would lead any reasonable person to believe that it was uh, in a de facto war against the Russian Federation in terms of some of the actions that are taking place. And that's the big concern, and that's how this, this whole thing could lead to this, uh, this, this escalation, uh, this escalation process that we could see happen. But going back to how does Russia win this war? Again, acknowledging that it is in a war, and then uh, secondly, at some point, the Russians are going to have to conduct activity which makes the Ukrainians, not just the Ukrainian military, but the Ukrainian civil population, understand that it is in a war. And unfortunately, and this is where it's going to get sensitive, and I'm not condoning this, but I'm simply looking back at history. And if we look at... Uh, major wars in uh, the European theater, especially against uh, First and Second World uh, nation states that have uh, high engineering capacity, very large cities, uh, very large uh, uh, population uh, centers, very, very, uh, very, th the ability to recruit large militaries, and then have those citizens in said nation-state support ongoing war efforts. The Russians are going to have to cripple the Ukrainian will to fight. And that's not going to be pretty. What we're seeing right now happening inside of Ukraine has really never been seen since World War II, especially in Europe. I mean, the only wars that we can look back on in the last 50, 60 years uh, outside of World War II is uh, maybe the uh, Korean War. And again, 
same instance in which the United States was trying to break the back of, of, North Kore of the North Koreans, and uh, that gets messy. We have not yet seen the Russians use the type of force that it could use to break the will of the Ukrainian people. Now, could we see that coming this winter? Possibly. And what do I mean by that? Am I talking about uh, carpet bombing Kiev? Yeah, I am, quite frankly. Now, uh, obviously, uh, is that going to happen? Probably not right now. But that's not to say this war could develop change and we could actively see that take place. Again, if we go back to World War II and we look at how the, uh, the, the Allied forces broke the will of the German people, it was through strategic bombing. And we've not seen strategic bombing take place uh, in, a, uh, in a very long time since really uh, the Korean War. Maybe you could consider uh, the uh, Russian uh, use of uh, of uh, of, uh, of its uh, aircraft and heavy artillery against maybe Chechnya and Grozny, possibly, but uh, we have we have not seen where uh, entire cities have been intentionally leveled. Yes, in uh, uh, the uh, the conflicts that have taken place uh, within the confines of this conflict, especially uh, uh, Mariupol. Uh, yes, we, we did see some, some very heavy fighting taking place in the cities, but we never saw the, the heavy-handed approach that uh, the Russian military could have used. I know, I know it looked that way at times in terms of some of the apartment complexes that were destroyed, and uh, to some extent the, uh, the, the, the Russians did use that sort of tactic in uh, Mariupol, but they did not level the city like we saw maybe in Dresden in World War II, or some of the firebombings of uh, Japanese cities and eventually the use of uh, nuclear weapons against Japanese cities. So to think that humanity is not capable of going back into that direction, I think you're, I think you're fooling yourself. And I think, again, it depends on the intensity of the conflict and how, how it continues. Uh, if we do see the eventual deployment of tactical nuclear weapons, again, very much a possibility. I think we would probably see first the use of uh, of tactical nuclear weapons even before we we would see uh, 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 direct uh, attempts by Russia to level some Ukrainian cities, completely cut off power during the winter, but. Uh, I think, unfortunately, for both parties, both Russia and Ukraine, if the Russians are going to win this, that ultimately is what we are going to see happen. Now, we're not there yet. It hasn't happened. Hopefully, it doesn't happen. But uh, to, uh, to say it won't happen, I think you're, you're fooling yourself. I think we've kind of entered a period in modern history, which, how long will this last? Who knows? Where... Uh, warfare is somewhat, at times, civilized, meaning Pandora's box has not been completely opened and we're not seeing total war take place. But to think that uh, uh, total war will not happen within the confines of this conflict or, uh, God forbid, a, uh, a direct war between uh, uh, Russia, uh, some of its allies, and, uh, and Western Europe, the, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Again, if, if you say that is impossible or, or won't happen, I think you are deceiving yourself because I think we're, right now at least, we are moving in that direction. And uh, unfortunately, the only way Russia is probably going to win this is to really take the gloves off and make this messy. And uh, Hopefully that does not happen, but uh, ultimately uh, that's kind of where we're where we're heading right now. And uh, ultimately, uh, Russia is going to have to acknowledge that it is in a war, not a uh, a, a special military operation. It's going to have to conduct itself in a manner in which uh, it operates against Ukrainian forces uh, in order to crush the Ukrainian will to fight.
And uh, at the same time, it's going to have to get its population behind this war. Uh, we're, you know, we're seeing some challenges in terms of what is happening with the Russian mobilization. But uh, that's, uh, that's probably normal. And uh, I think we're now starting to see uh, Russia uh, start to pivot uh, towards that uh, total uh, war uh, mentality. So uh, we'll have to see what happens. And obviously, we'll continue to watch, cover, and, uh, and bring you more content. Uh, and then I didn't really cover uh, what's happening on the ground. Uh, you know, not a lot of changes. Uh, we continue to see the uh, Ukrainian forces cross the Askil River and establish uh, terrain on that side of the terrain. But uh, we'll soon have more, uh, more coverage soon to come. Thanks and have a good day.